Skinner Auto Group in Richfield Springs and Turnbull Insurance Service since 1866 present Mohawk Valley Living, exploring the arts, culture, and heritage of our region. A special good morning to Fred and Lois watching in Oneonta. Good morning and welcome to Mohawk Valley Living and to all the mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Uh, today my children are taking my wife, she's not my mother, but she's their mother, out to lunch. We're looking forward to it. And uh, we're also during the show going to be showing you some clips from years gone by. Oh, actually, we're going way back to the beginning, which believe it or not is 2005. Boonville was settled somewhere around 1795 by a fellow whose name was not Boone. The founder of Boonville was uh, Garrett Boone, and he originally had named the village Cortenaire. The first settler of Boonville was Andrew Edmonds. He brought his family there, and as a family, they went ahead and built a sawmill and a grist mill. Unfortunately for them, they burned down, but typical of the spirit of Boonville, early even way back then, and the entrepreneurial spirit, they came back a year later and rebuilt it. The first stop on our trip today is going to be the Irwin Library here in Boonville. It has a bit of a history of its own. Mr. Irwin, again, was very typical of the early entrepreneurial spirit. He uh, made quite a bit of money, but he left Boonville. But because he loved the place so much, in his will, he gave back to the village of Boonville the money that was used to build the library. In the library on the top floor of the tower is something rather interesting, too. Uh, it was occupied by a lawyer, and it was the lawyer who at that time happened to also be the first librarian. But more about that in a moment. The 1850s were a golden decade for Boonville, with a plank road, railroad, and canal, which connected the village to the growing city of Utica. On our visit to Boonville, the streets were lined with gold. And although we were only visitors, we felt like we were home. We stopped at a beautiful building that at first we thought was a castle. We were surprised to find out that not only was it the town library, but that it was built to be a library and had always been one. My name is Donna Ripp and I'm co-director of Irwin Library and Institute and we're located on the corner of Post and Schuyler Street in Boonville, New York. While the library is named after the man who left the money to the village to build the library, um, Cornelius Irwin was his name. Mr. Irwin left Boonville at a young age to go to New Berlin, Connecticut, where he made his fortune in textiles and when he passed away he left the sum of $86,000 to the village of Boonville. Um, $25,000 of that came to the library, but he also left money to um, churches in Boonville. We have a park named after Mr. Irwin. We have a street named after Mr. Irwin. And the building was started in um, November of 19, 1890 and completed in April of 1891. And it's built of native limestone. Our original librarian at this library was a man named Leander Fisk, and he was also an attorney, and he had his law offices in the tower of the library. And in our local history room, we have the bookcase that he used to store his law books. Now, Mr. Fisk earned the princely sum of $500 for his first year of librarian, and he returned $425 of that to the library board to complete the construction of the building. People have thought that it was a church or a castle, and some even thought of it, that it was a private home, but it was built to be a library. We left Jan and headed back into the village for our host Richard's favorite pastime, exploring post offices. Sure enough, we weren't disappointed. Inside, there is a beautiful mural depicting Erie Canal Commerce, painted by twin sisters from New Orleans. To see what we can see, traveling round the Mohawk Valley, 
Traveling round the Mohawk Valley. Let's see what we can see. We head just six miles south of Boonville to Pixley Falls State Park. The park's main attraction is the 50-foot waterfall. This picturesque park also features steep wooded hills and a mountain stream. A nature trail meanders through the forest and past Pixley Falls. The park has 22 streamside campsites and access to numerous miles of trout streams. A cross-country ski trail runs along the Black River Canal, which is just inside the park entrance. There are still lots of leaves on the trees to offer beautiful color on the hike down to the waterfall. But as the trees lose their leaves, there are many more views of the falls. The recent rainfall has resulted in a spectacular rush of water. We could stay at the falls all day, if we weren't getting so hungry. So we head back into town where there's many options for lunch. We stop in at Slim's restaurant on Main Street. To see. Slim's has been around longer than anyone remembers. We meet the current Slim, John Gaylord. Hi, my name is John Gaylord. I've owned Slim's, me and my wife have owned Slim's for 10 years now. And we're planning on staying here for probably a couple more anyways. Uh, Slim's has been here for as long as I can remember and before that. They had various, it's always been named Slim's. Some Slim's were fat and short and others are tall and thin. But other than that, it's just a hometown restaurant here in Boonville. Boonville is quite a close-knit community and uh, People come in here and discuss the world's problems and the village problems and everybody else's problems. Uh, by and large, it's uh, just a friendly gathering place with good food. Back in 1945, Skinner Auto began as a small dealership on the corner of Routes 20 and 28 in Richfield Springs. Today, Hiram Skinner is proud to have his son Roger at the helm, continuing the tradition of service to the customer and the community. In 1866, James B. Turnbull walked to farms and villages to visit his customers, earning their trust. Today, the fourth generation of Turnbulls continue that dedication, tailoring a life insurance plan to suit your unique needs and priorities. Turn to the company that is out there to earn your trust. Turn to Turnbull. Visit North Star Orchards for your spring planting. You can grow what North Star grows, from a variety of fruit trees to blueberry bushes. Visit today and get a free North Star tote with any hanging basket at North Star Orchards in Westmoreland. Tom's Natural Foods is your connection to local farms for natural and organic fruits and vegetables, meats, eggs, cheeses, and other milk products at Tom's Natural Foods in Clinton, naturally. Why do contractors and do-it-yourselfers shop Lincoln Davies? It's the superior grade lumber, the value for the money, the 140 years and six generations of customer service. Since 1872, Lincoln Davies has delivered superior lumber, value, and service, and they're not about to change things now. Celebrating 140 years at the same location, just 10 minutes south of New Hartford on Summit Road between Routes 12 and 8. Lincoln Davies, building them like they used to. Remember when you used to bring your mother bouquets of dandelions? I'll bet she does. Brighten her Mother's Day with a floral gift from Chester's. You can even shop Chester's greenhouses on Mother's Day. On display at the Arkell Museum, the works of E. Mark Adams and Beth Van Hosen. Adams hailed from Fort Plain, and the couple were well-known masters of their craft. Mother's Day is family day with free admission for mothers and grandmothers at the Arkell Museum at Canajahari. Visit the exhibits at the United Community Mansion House. On display, the braidings of Jesse Catherine Kinsley, the needlework of the United Community Women, and Lady Hamilton tableware. Tour the exhibits and the gardens at the Oneida Community Mansion House in Oneida. 
We're spending another day in Utica this week, starting on Genesee Street at the Grand Oneida County Historical Society, a local landmark built in the early 1900s. The recently restored ceiling is breathtaking, arcing high above the exhibit gallery. The current display is about Oneida County's participation in the Civil War. This is the 150th anniversary of the American Civil War, and Oneida County's uh, citizens formed five volunteer infantry regiments that went uh, to battle, and they fought in some of the worst battles of the war, including the battle at Gettysburg and uh, Fredericksburg, as well as the battle in the wilderness. So Oneida County citizens had a huge impact on the uh, prosecution of the Civil War, and it's something that we're memorializing here over the next couple of years. Well, in conjunction with the 150th anniversary, we are developing and will be dedicating the Oneida County Civil War Memorial on the Society's South Lawn. And that's going to consist of an 1861 Union Cannon that was, uh, has been in Utica since the 1880s. We are restoring it for, uh, for display and we're building a pavilion uh, out on our South Lawn to, um, to help preserve the memory of Oneida County citizens. In addition to the Civil War exhibit, the main gallery features many other displays of local artifacts. This is a very old soapbox race car. I never had one. I, I couldn't put together the money, I guess, to build something this elaborate. Uh, they, they, they used to race down the parkway, and the last race was in 1966. That's not too terribly long ago. What I had were um, what were they called? Scooters. They were made from boxes in the front with a little thing on the bottom with uh, wheels that were from skates. That's all that I could afford to put together. And we used to take those down, uh, Seymour Ave, from the parkway to James Street, and it went pretty fast. Not quite as fast as this, I'm sure. It was the boom town around here when Gillette stepped off that train. Canals flowing, hops growing, new towns being raised. There were fortunes to be made, he was a well-dressed one-man show. A tail spinner, a heart winner with a lusty ego. It was a boom town around here, how I wished I was there. It was a rockin' boom town around here. With a girl named Grace working in a petticoat factory. A simple pearl poor country girl who had promised to marry. We head south on Genesee Street, almost a French road, to Rose's Italian Bakery and Deli. This place is so busy, you feel like a guest at an Italian family reunion. The Battisti family has been in the food business for quite some time. Pasquale's was in East Utica for some 35 years and now very close to the border of New Hartford in South Utica is Rosa's and you can come in here and it's the fragrance of Italian food and the taste of Italian food. They bake all of their own pastries here and they have my favorite which is the good old-fashioned tomato pie. Not pizza, tomato pie. Growing up in an Italian pet, the food was the number one priority. That's what I remember about my parents. That's what we were brought up with, food on the table, not a lot of material things, and family was important. I was born in Italy. My grandparents were uh, peddlers. They had stores and fruit stores and uh, delis in Italy, and I just had just carried on. Rosa's Italian Bakery and Deli is located at 2644 Genesee Street and is open Mondays 10 to 5 and Tuesday through Saturday 8 to 2. Well, good times may come and good times go, but one thing stays the same. It's the feeling I get when I look around. It lets me know I'm a home. I'm making this better. I am standing in front of the former St. Francis de Sales School. Now, this takes me back another at least 50 years, more than 50 years, because in high school, they were our huge competitor. I went to UCA, and there was always this head-to-head -head competition between the two schools. But that set aside, every Friday night, I think it was every Friday night, we'd come here to the dances, and my memory of that is walking around and around in circles, scoping out the girls and hoping to uh, pick up a date. 
this is the auditorium where I would spend Friday nights walking around the edge and finding girls that I could jitterbug with, jitterbug for hours. Boy, does it bring back memories. Now, some 50 or more years later, it is still very active and a very important part of the community. This former school is now home to Thea Bowman House. The organization traces its origins back to 1986 as an after-school program for latchkey children. It has grown to two locations, one in West Utica and here on Genesee Street, and serves over 300 children aged 18 months to 18 years with ever-expanding programs. I'm so proud to go. The automobile has gone through many changes through the years, but the Turnbull family's commitment to local drivers has not. Researching and selecting the best coverage for you with unparalleled service, claims handling, and settlement. Turn to a local company with four generations of knowledge and experience. Turn to Turnbull. Experience our nation's proud history during the Town of Western Heritage Days. Fireworks Friday night are followed by two days of colonial encampments, crafts, games, period music, food, and more. Admission is free to the Town of Western Heritage Days, June 1st through 3rd. Hi, Dr. Tom. Bringing your cat to the Paris Hill Cat Hospitals on Sundays is a part of Mohawk Valley Living. Come inside and see why. Paris Hill Cat Hospital, this is Lindsay. How can I help you? Your cat is losing weight and you need an appointment? and you're only available on the weekend. Sure, I have an appointment Sunday with Dr. Karen. Does that fit into your schedule? Okay, we'll see you then. Thank you. We're open seven days a week because we know that your cat can become ill anytime. The Paris Hill Cat Hospital, quality care for your cats and kittens. Taste the homemade difference at Maria's Pasta Shop. Homemade lasagna, manicot, stuffed shells, ravioli, and more. Ready-made dinners, make it home, and party trays at Maria's Pasta Shop, Oneida Street in Utica. When you shop Milan's Market, you'll be the grill master. That's because every hot dog, beef patty, and sausage is made by Bob Milan himself. Find everything for your next cookout from store-made meats to fresh salads and tabbouleh at Milan's Market at the Four Corners in Clark Mills. For the most unique shopping experience, visit the Little Falls Antique Center and the shops at 25 West. Over 40 local vendors all under one roof. Antique lovers can spend hours perusing thousands of ever-changing antiques and collectibles. Upstairs at the shops, you'll find something for everyone. Handmade crafts, jewelry and clothing, fine art, food and kitchen gadgets, books and home furnishings. Shop local at the Little Falls Antique Center and the shops at 25 West. Always worth the drive at Canal Place in Little Falls. Artwork from the Adirondack Kids book series is on display at VIEW through July 15th. Meet the authors Gary and Justin at the opening reception and the official release of Book 12 Saturday, May 19th from 1 to 3 at VIEW in Old Forge. By the tall oak tree, trying to catch the ones that got away. Ooh, take me back. my childhood dreams of yesterday. Did you know Genesee Street is well over five miles long? There are many architectural treasures along its route, like the eye-catching Triangle Coffee Shop building across from the Gold Dome Bank. The building behind me is really amazing as a, a piece of architecture. It's been here since 1884. Turnbull Insurance was upstairs here in the 1800s, and the coffee shop on the first floor has been here since 1929. And I think Terry Kane has been here flipping flapjacks for about that long. I don't dare tell him that, do I? <laughs> we can see traveling around the Mohawk Valley. Let's see. We head from an old coffee shop to a relatively new one at 92 Genesee Street, Utica Coffee Roasting Company. It was founded in 2007 to produce fine coffee and to help revitalize this historic part of downtown. We're greeted by the fresh aroma of roasting coffee and by owner Frank Elias. His company seeks out the finest green coffee in the world to roast fresh here in Utica. There are bags and bags of raw coffee beans waiting to be roasted, like Guatemalan Antigua, Sumatra, Brazil Cerrado, Colombian Organic, and a Swiss water-pressed Costa Rican decaf. Oh, and of course, espresso. This is Utica.
Frank demonstrates the process that turns these green little beans into the magical flavor people around Utica and the world crave. Hot leave it to you. You can take it. I am here at the Utica Coffee Roasting Company enjoying some of their very, very fresh roasted coffee. As a matter of fact, you just made this for me two minutes ago, right? And to add to the Utica flavor, when you stir the coffee here, you'll be using a stirrer that is made of pasta. How Utica is that? Everything here is local. The artwork on the walls, the bagels here are from the Oreos, and uh, the cookies are from Napoli's, and what else? Sushi. Sushi. Sushi is from Lotus Garden. So you come in here, everything is Utica. Craving some fresh roasted Utica coffee, grab a cup at the Tramontane Cafe, tucked off of Court Street on Lincoln Ave. There's always fresh coffee brewing and interesting conversation percolating. We visited the Tramontane when it first opened, and here it is. They're celebrating their fourth anniversary. It is so good to see that they're successful. Even though we are in West Utica, when I come in here, it feels so much like being in Lower Manhattan. We'll find any excuse to visit the magnificent Union Station. The 47-foot-high vaulted ceiling supported by marble columns is awe-inspiring. Our excuse this time is a haircut for our host. We noticed a new barbershop pole spinning in the window of the old barbershop. The price is as reasonable as we remember, but when we enter, we notice a new barber. He seems as interested in the shop's history as we are and points out some of the famous heads of hair that have walked through the door. And our host steps right up. Uh, because my old friend who owned this for a long time, Dan Criaco, yeah. was, was <laughs> ill, was ill. And he, uh, he didn't want this place to close up. So he called me up one day and asked me if I would be interested in keeping it open because it had been in his family for 67 years. Uh -huh. So I said, I would give it a try. Mm -hmm. So here I am. I did it because I didn't want the place to close. It's a great building. It's a great barbershop, as you can see, yeah. very much the same as it was in 1913. And I wanted to keep it that way, you know? So my son and I decided to uh, come down here and give it a try. Here's what's hot on the lot at Skinner Auto. Check out this 2008 Ford Mustang Coupe, automatic with V6. Only 19,000 miles and now only 16,576. Just one of the many great deals at Skinner Auto in Richfield Springs. I, R.A. Dudrak, the Window King, invite you to visit our showroom in Holland Patent or we'll come to your home by appointment. We've been installing replacement windows for over 45 years. Keep your palace cool in the summer and warm in the winter by adding new windows. Many styles and selections to choose from. Bay, bow, garden, and double hung, single hung, and slider windows. The Window King also introduces color replacement windows. So take a short drive to R.A. Dudrak, Holland Patent, and tell them the Window King sent you. On display at the Arkell Museum, the works of E. Mark Adams and Beth Van Hosen. Adams hailed from Fort Plain, and the couple were well-known masters of their craft. Mother's Day is Family Day with free admission for mothers and grandmothers at the Arkell Museum at Canajahari. Call Yannick Excavating for all your residential and commercial projects, from new construction and land clearing to septic systems, driveways, basements, ponds, and topsoil. Visit YannickExcavating.com. Spring style begins at the Village Crossing. Discover unique women's attire, jewelry, handbags, and accessories designed to delight. The Village Crossing on the Village Green in Clinton. Shop shelter for handmade Adirondack furniture designed by craftsman Jim Kiefer. He works with you to create custom pieces to your specifications, from dining room and coffee tables to bookcases, beds, and bunks. Call or visit shelter on Main Street in Old Forge.
Enjoy a delicious pot of fine flavored varietal and herbal teas at the tea bar at Trenton Teas or arrange an afternoon tea in the tea room. Visit TrentonTeas.com to learn about upcoming events or to arrange your own event at Trenton Teas on Elizabeth Street in Utica. The Longaretta Law Firm, protecting your rights and advising you in matters of legal importance. Call for your free consultation, 735-6162. Expecting company? Just call Deansboro Superette. They prepare delicious Middle Eastern platters for any number of guests. Call 841-4377. This week we head to the city of Utica. Utica was first settled by Europeans on the site of Fort Schuyler in 1773. The fort was located next to the shallowest spot along the Mohawk, where early Native Americans forded the river. This area where they traded with early pioneers is now the site of a modern marvel, the Utica Memorial Auditorium. It is now home to some other pioneers, the Utica College Hockey Team, as well as many other local teams and events. It has a capacity to hold 5,700 people, more than half of the population of Utica when it became a city in 1832. Uh, the odd was built as final construction and they, they go 1960 with it. Uh, the big thing about the building was one of the first of its type around, so it got all kinds of shows passing through New York State and was centrally located. Uh, we just received an engineering award uh, for its construction. It's the first suspended ceiling building of its type in this country, one of the first three in the world. Uh, what makes it unique and why we received the award is we're a double-spoke cable bicycle ceiling. Uh, that gives us a dome effect. Madison Square Garden was the second one. They have a single-spoke uh, hub bicycle to ceiling. Well, I'll tell you what, the two of the most memorable concerts we had were last year. We had uh, Further, which is the last two members of the Grateful Dead, Phil Lesh and Bob Weir, that were here. They sold out, tremendous concert. And we had uh, Fish here. And uh, again, it was a sellout concert, naturally. We were the only house in New York State they played, and the smallest house on the tour with 5,500 seats. Uh, the next smallest house on that tour was 10,000, and they played there three days in a row. While they were here, though, they did cut a two-disc DVD that's available online. Oh, nice. So it says, Live in Utica, the fish. So there's a lot of history here. Elvis was supposed to be here two days after he died, so there's still tickets around Utica for that concert. Uh, I haven't got any concerts on the books yet, but we've got monster trucks coming up. We've got the Jordan Circus. We've got the Wine and Chocolate Festival. We've got uh, uh, the, the uh, Leatherstocking Gymnastics Competition coming up next month as well as the Globe Trotters this month. Uh, so we're booked up again. I have some very fond memories of the Odd. I can remember when it opened, and I can remember what the, uh, the first show here was. I believe it was the Ice Capades, and I came to see it. Now it's uh, the home to hockey teams. It's the home ice for Utica College. It's busy all the time. Uh, there was a question way back then. I was only, what, 19 years old? as to whether it would succeed, it has, and it's really a very integral part of Utica. It is.